Shalom, shalom, and welcome to the Ways of Israel. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero. I'm currently on vacation break, as it were, and uh, looking throughout what's going on throughout the world in different social media, one becomes aware that we are in a true battle, a battle for the life or death of this nation, no doubt about it, hearing so many different comments. And one will walk away a, a kind of shocked to hear some of my fellow Jewish um, opinions that happen to be, unfortunately, democratic, socialist, communist mindset. So, you know, I am one that I'm not of that mindset. And I've heard so many different opinions. And uh, we are definitely in big trouble. Why do I say we're in big trouble? Because it appears that the entire Democratic Party, the whole, you might say, push in this country, is one that seeks to negate God in every aspect that made this country great. The very foundation of this country was based on that. And so we're hearing of so many different uh, leaders in the political field with the Jewish surnames that one has to just be amazed as to what's going on in this country. I mean, it was bad enough that we heard from Mario Cuomo his negation that God had nothing to do with the resolution in the, in the in the solution of the healings that was taking place in New York by Jewish doctors, doctors who happened to be God-fearers, negating. And they have came out and told their stories about how awful the Cuomo's and the de Blasio has been in New York. But we should not be shocked by that because the very heart of the beat of democratic socialism happens to be in New York. Yes, we have our liberal leftist Jews here in Florida. That's where I'm from. And unfortunately, we're fighting a big battle also in the district uh, where I live in, uh, which happens to be a, a Jewish woman. And uh, of course, I am going to be pushing for her contender, uh, who happens not to be Jewish, uh, just to be completely opposite. So there's a choice for me to make a decision, either to vote for a liberal leftist the socialist, communist, democratic Jewish woman who supported all of the great disasters in the past of the Obama administration, of the Clintons, of the DNC uh, malfunction, as it were, stealing of emails. Um, and I'm sorry, and I'm encouraging my fellow Jews right now not to vote if you're in the district, I believe the District 23, which encumbers uh, the Hollywood, the Dania Beach, the, the Western area. Don't vote for Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Uh, there has been a lot of fraudulent issues taking place in her elections here in Florida. Um, she is well connected in the community, and there's a lot of her base who happens to be of the same notion, Jewish, liberal to the left, from different streams, reform, conservative, uh, even Orthodox. And uh, we're seeing that everything is being ready and prepared to also try to change the election results. My friends, we're in a situation, it's not an issue of whether you're Jewish or not, it's whether if you believe in God or not. And unfortunately, we've had this travesty in our country. Keep in the Jewish community, because we know that even in Egypt, not everyone left Egypt. Many left behind dead because of Hashem's action, direct action. We know about that. We read it on, in Pesach Seder, but yet it doesn't hit us till we see the possibility of that being repeated here in the United States. There is no difference. Either you're going to stand for God or you're going to stand for the complete opposite powers of God, which is what's trying to arise its ugly head once again in history. Yes, we are coming to the time of Mashiach, no doubt about that. But at the same time, there is a ultimate struggle taking place between godliness and the forces of evil, which is rising its ugly head. And it only rises its head every time the opportunity is given to the children of Israel to reconnect and to grow and to do what Hashem calls us to do, which is to be a priest, a nation of priesthood, a nation of kings. And we're seeing that that was taking place just prior 
to everything, and we've seen the great success that this president has had in making sure that, that first of all, Israel would be declared, or Jerusalem would be declared, the, 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 the city, the eternal city of the country Israel. And it is for this reason um, that as a result, things began to rain horribly um, upon every God-fearing Jew, every God-fearer clear. And we're finding that now all the forces, all of the forces of evil, if you can think about this, is doing everything in its power to completely stop the current president who is successful in even creating a peace, a prophetic fulfillment of a peace agreement with the nation of Ishmael or the Arab uh, nation. Something that was never done ever in any of the previous administrations, be it Republican or Democrat. We're also seeing a, a big move as you will see that California and many other states that are being run by Democrats are pushing for a non-God in the polit political process. Why are they doing this? Because both the uh, the religious world is asleep. It's asleep, and I'll say this quite frankly, not only is the Jewish world asleep, but the, it also is asleep is the Christian world. Those who basically had the push of fundamentalism in the sense of believing in one God. And by, by the way, this whole idea of Prayer in the school was very well supported by a well-known rabbi who passed away some years ago, the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He was in one that advocated for prayer in school. That even though there is the idea of freedom of religion, that we have the right to express our religion, religion was never, never was something to be banned in the political processes which is what we're seeing. It starts in the political process, that, which is what they want to ban, but they also want to ban it in any aspect of public life, where your religious ideas cannot influence the political system. If they do this, they will create a, a big hole in our current political system. As in God, we have an obligation to have our views and opinions expressed on the candidates we choose. If you choose, this is why it is a life and death situation, if in this election you choose a candidate that basically has, has consistently denied the religious views of God believers, notice I'm saying God believers, I'm including everything under that same idea, and you decide to vote against that person, or vote for that person who basically has a reputation of negating everything that has to do with God, with religion, you are thus negating God in your decision to vote for that candidate. Well, you say, well, you know, Trump is an immoral person, an unethical person. Let's be honest here. There has been no president that hasn't had any problem, uh, that has been perfectly holy. Every single person in the political process is tainted. Politics brings about a lot of corruption. Even our fellow Jewish uh, Congress people are full of corruption. We know, have one here in South Florida that I'm pushing to see her get out and lose the election. And I hope you're with me on that. And I will probably be speaking with, with a representative in that area. But it is clear that we are in a battle for our life or the death of this nation. I'm seeing it left and right as they're posting up different uh, media campaigns in different media channels. They are creating a narrative that we know is completely false, untrue. They're trying to blame Trump for all of the death that has taken place because of the pandemic. My question is to the, those who are voting that way because they feel that, oh, Trump has allowed so many hundreds of thousands of people to die. First of all, who put Fossey, the, the, I guess the, the, the medical director, in his position? I don't think it was Trump. I think it was before the Trump administration. 
And what we've read and we understand is that basically this gentleman, Falsi, has been involved in the Wuhan laboratory and had pre-warned the Trump administration that a pandemic was coming to his administration just prior to him taking complete office. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a previous government that has never happened in this country basically manipulating and doing everything as he promised he would do to destroy the current administration and to bring him down and bring him down hard. America, wake up. America, you're in danger. Everything has been hit at him left and right. And if you have noticed, everything Trump has done so far, not because he's perhaps worthy of such accolades, but everything he has done has succeeded in every shape and form, including the issues with Korea, including the issues with even the Russian, falsely accused him of being involved in, in, a, in a Russian collusion. Every single thing this Democratic Party has tried to do and throw on him has failed terribly and will continue because, you know, you can throw all the crap you can on a person but if it's not true, it won't stick, and it hasn't stuck on him. Why? Because it's not true, my friends. We've got to wake up to the reality. And I'm, hopefully I'm speaking to a lot of you who are Jewish, because the majority of you and 98% of you voted for Obama, voted for the crap. And you're going to repeat the same mistake again. And this time it's not going to be something that will be easily, easily removable. Keep in mind, they're talking about implanting a system that will make China look like a little baby, that you will be traced, you will be monitored, you'll be controlled, you'd lose your freedoms of speech, your freedoms of marching. Keep in mind, these march, peaceful marches that was basically orchestrated by many in the Democratic Party many who are pro-Black Lives Matter organizers, who is basically a socialist organization whose intention is very, very clear. It is to destroy and insurrect America. If you love this country, if you love the capitalism, if you love the freedoms that you enjoy, you may have to fight for it again. And we're talking about November 3rd. Fight as if your life depends on it, because it does. It depends on my life, your life, all of our lives. If we don't make it very clear, our vo vote and our decision, then we will let them ruin this country, as they have done many other countries before. Look at Cuba. Look at the terrible situation there. I've been in Cuba. I've seen how systems destroy people and how they come to be complacent with their poverty and their system of mediocrity. I don't want such a system in this country. And this is what they're pushing for. So that the elite will be in control of the great masses of wealth in this country, which is what the billionaires, like the Bloombergs, like the, the Soros, like these Bernie Sanders. And notice I'm using Jewish names. You should be afraid Especially you Christians, you know, you're afraid of that, that, the, that the, um, the Antichrist will arise among the Jews. When a Jew doesn't believe in God, you should fear him. Because it's the worst satanic force that can be launched and leashed out on any country. Keep in mind, who brought, brought forth the worst evil in the world called communists? Wasn't it two Jews who basically said that religion was the opium of the people? And yet now we face the same troubles. And me as a Jew, I as a Jew, am warning you, non-Jews and Jews, to wake up. You cannot allow this to happen. If you do, then you are participators with that system that is arising. You must fight it with all of your heart, your mind, and your force. And I'm talking about all kinds of force if necessary. You must go to the ballot box. Make your vote count. Make sure your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your, your cousins, and those who have the same views of the Democrats, leave the Democratic Party. This is a life or death issue. 
No doubt about it. This election is not like any other election before. It's not like in the election before, which had quasi Democrat or Rhino Democrat as Bush and the Bush family that were protecting their interests. And I'm a Republican or a Mitt Romney, who basically is also a sellout, and many other rhino Republicans who are also sellout to the party, sellout to the truth, sellout for the billions of dollars that they want to make off of the pandemic. Let's take the mask off and realize what's going on in this country. It is a competition to who's going to control not only the United States, but the world at large. China is in it. China has, is looking every which way to try to infiltrate as well as the election and also Russia. So we have a lot of enemies to a certain extent in this electoral process. And we have to make sure that they stay out of it. They're going to do everything they can to manipulate the votes. And I can tell you right now, you have two parties that have been in, in, in bed with the Democratic uh, Party. One is China, no doubt about it. Don't forget it was Obama who signed the deal of trillions of trillions of trillions of dollars of debt in order to spend and waste money and give money to the very enemies of America and brought over the very enemies that we were fighting against in their country and they brought, he brought them over here. We have these type of uh, individuals even in Congress today. They're called the squads. They need to be eliminated. They need to be completely fusillated. They need to be completely uh, liquidated, if you want to call it, which way you want to call it, either by election or any other form. We're talking about the life of this nation. If this nation falls, yes, it could very be possible. Another nation will arise. It may be Israel. But definitely, without a doubt, even at that point, even Israel will be at a point that they will be completely left alone. Is this what you Jews, liberal, ungodly, God-negating Jews want to do in this country too? This is not Germany. This is not Latin America. This is the United States of America which opened its arms to allow many of you who were coming from Germany, war-torn Germany, by a fascist dictator named Adolf Hitler, in which Yamak Shemo, may his name be forever erased. But it will not be as long as you continue to commit the same mistakes that your forefathers did when they elected Hitler into office. Yes, my friends, Jews were the ones that basically put him into power. The same Jews with the same mindset that as an, as an outsider, I am a German. I'm a true German, and voted a radical individual into office. All he wanted was to unite the nation, just like what Biden is saying. I want to bring everybody together. I want to bring everybody together. From day one, I remember listening to many rabbis in the association that I belong, all that Trump is going to be the very incarnate of of Hitler, he is a hate monger, he is this, he is that. And I'm saying, first of all, I know Trump. I know Trump through, through, through the Trump Towers that I used to uh, temporarily be the rabbi of that, that synagogue there when Ben Arush passed away. I know his good Israeli friend there, we spoke. And I'm saying to myself, no. No, he's a businessman. He's a man that knows how to make money, how to bring solutions to the table. And he's de demonstrated that time and time again. And I'm asking myself, what is happening? Why are Jews turning against a man who basically made it happen, made the declaration that Jerusalem is the eternal city of Israel, made this peace agreement possible, completely changed the whole entire dynamic of the Middle East situation into a positive which more nations are now going to be joining forces to bring for peace with Israel. Something that no other has done. Neither Obama, neither Clintons, neither the Bush, neither any of those Republicans, rhino sellouts, have done. And yet, Every time now an opportunity is given to this president 
to appoint a new justice that could change the balance of the justice of the courts, all of a sudden, they're protesting again. Why? Because they're looking to do an awful and terrible deed that you normally see in Latin America. They're planning a coup d'etat. Who do they have? And this is why I'm concerned. I have seen such generals come out like Colin Powell against him. Well, he was always a sellout. As far as I'm concerned, he was always a military sellout. But the problem is he has other military men behind him that will look for trying to knock him out of office, take him out, as it were. We've seen that with, with uh, the, for, the Senator Kerry's declaration. The Democrat, all of these are Democrats, by the way. They're Democratic Socialists that they're willing to do whatever it takes to knock them off. And unfortunately, our president, may you have him in your prayers, even as we pray on Yom Kippur, because our president is at a very, very dangerous situation right now. His life, even though he's surrounded by CIA operatives, his life is at jeopardy every minute that passes by because he has a lot of people who hate him, people who basically would like to see him not only out of office, but actually out of this world. And we're talking about serious intent. Haven't you heard about the intent to try to, um, to knock him off with the recent uh, package of, of, uh, of, of poison to try to knock him off? My friend, we need to pray for our president. You Christians, you ought to be praying for your president. Not to have him removed, but to have him installed and strengthened. Christianity has the greatest thing to be lost in this, in this election. Christians' rights to vote, right to express themselves, right to congregate, will be at risk under a Biden-Harris-Obama, because he's in the behind, without a doubt, the Obama, this whole entire oppressive system that Bernie Sanders has put forth as their platform under this new Democratic Party. This is not the Democratic Party of the past. This is the evil party of the present. It refers to a communist evil intent to knock them off because, you know, when you don't win the prop, the, you don't win fairly and squarely, uh, or you lose square fairly and squarely, you, you have envy, you have bitterness, you have hatred, you have animosity, you have all of this hate that has been launched forth from all the people who are pro-socialist Democrats. And you know what the good thing has been? I'm trying to tell you what the good thing has been throughout this whole process. We have been able to distinguish the good and the evil. We've been able to see who, who, came out, who have come out of the closet pretending to be good, and in fact they were evil and are evil. That is what Trump has created within his own government or within the government itself. We have seen what has come out. It has been the greatest garbage that we have yet to see. How many more operatives are involved in quiet uh, conversations with the Democratic Party to see how they can get them out? How many media representatives are involved in the same thing? How are we going to create the narratives? What are we going to say? What are we going to do? What does it matter to me? I'm just a regular citizen. It matters the whole entire nation. If I don't speak up my mind, it may be the last time I can speak up my mind, to speak up my own opinions of things. Because the following year, if it falls into the hands of the Democratic, I call it, Democratic Party. Why Democratic? You know, in Judaism, we have this concept of a debuk. A debuk, it refers to it, an unclean soul or spirit that incarnates within another body. Okay, you say, well, that's just mythical, that's nice, so forth. Some people believe it, others do not. But this party, in a very, very realistic form, has been possessed by a spirit that didn't, it didn't have before. And you Jews should walk away from it. Because it's a spirit that denies God. It's a spirit that denies the very freedoms this country was founded on. And you are supporting a move to the opposite direction just to get... Trump out just because you think 
Trump is responsible for over 200,000 death that was caused by the pandemic? Let me ask you a serious question, you Jews who blame Trump for this. Who is in charge of life and death in this world? Is it not God? Is it not God who gives life? And is it not God who gives death? Is it not God who, who basically causes the sickness? Is it not God who causes the healing? Is it not God who said exactly that in his word, in, by his prophets? And yet you scratch your head and you blame a man that was informed just days upon accepting the presidency and the first thing he did was block travel to and from China. He did what he could. And yet... You have in New York City the very liberal democratic government which you Jews in New York voted for by majority. The very same Jews that for, voted for the Obama administration, that voted for the Debbie Wasserman Schultz in Florida, that was basically betraying the interests of all of Israel, of all America, in their votes in Congress. How can you look at yourself and see yourself and say what you just said. Trump is to blame? When under democratic power, Fossey was put into power? Fossey was the one that funded the Wuhan laboratories under with, with Gates' plan and this whole idea of enriching individual people to be able to make billions off the death and murder and euthanasia of a population which Gates was in favor of? My friends, wake up. Where are we at in this country? Oh, let us give license to immorality. That's what Obama did. License immorality under the name of LGBT. And God forbid I say that. Because now I can be taken to task for saying, Immorality. You know, people that fear God understand this. They understand there are do's and don'ts in our individual conducts and behavior. And when you go against that and you legalize the immorality and you legalize the criminality and you legalize the, the way of life that is corruptive and corrosive to a society, you have the result that we have today, my friends. You have people in California putting up signs, God out of government, God, we have no place for God here. Remember many years ago when they took out God from the school. Remember many years ago, they took out even the idea of speaking about God in the school. And all of a sudden we had the school shootings. We have the disasters of, of, of complete disorder, chaos in the family. When you take out God out of your life, you're taking the very presence of life out and you're allowing to death to come into the country, to come into and saturate it. And if this does not bring some fear of God in you, God forbid you walk down the streets in, in some of these cities that are controlled and governed by Democrats, controlled in, in, in by these thugs that are walking by. Thank God DeSantis here in Florida has the chutzpah to make it and tighten the rope on these elements of hoodlums and looters who are being funded by such likes of these liberal atheist Jews like Soros. And let me say this to your religious Jews. You know very well it's a mitzvah to eliminate a moser, even among us. And we have various moserims in this nation putting at risk all Jewish lives, all god fears lives, all Noahide lives. And it is incumbent, incumbent upon anyone that listens and has the zeal of God to such a perfection as Rambam talks about to liquidate such people. Why? Every day they say of life, they become a continuous threat. I hope and pray Trump wins the election. I will vote for Trump. And I hope and pray he will have the clarity to be able to understand that he needs to put this man, Soros, in jail. He needs to investigate and declare Black Lives Matter a terrorist 
organization and begin an investigation on all of the donors that donated to that organization and investigate those companies and their motives for insurrection against the United States of America and the people of this republic. My friends, I don't want to live in a communist state. I don't want to live in a, in a dictatorial state. But come as it will, I will fight to the best of my ability to keep my freedoms, to keep my right to express my opinions as it is this one. Yes, I may be poor, but my will is very rich because I'm very wealthy, perhaps not with money, but yes, with a content of character that has taken me through the most difficult parts of my life. I have been through hell, and you have no idea what hell is like. I have been through hell and high waters before. A good friend of mine, the Rabbi Abraham de Leon Cohen, may he have a refuah shlema, he would tell me constantly, listen, our people are very tough people, and when you're involved in the work that you're involved with, you're going to have a lot of enemies. You have to make it as tight of, as hide, because you're going to have to take a lot. It's not easy dealing with the Jewish people. Our people have different interests, and not necessarily has to do with God. Sometimes just the opposite, God, ungodliness, practices that we should abhor, that we should hate. And yet, we are not yet redeemed. This is why we cry out with our hearts and our souls, Mashiach now, we want the Messiah now, but we don't want another fake one. We don't want a, another could have been, should have been, would have been. And this is why I cry out through this media so, so, so adamantly. I don't want another Jesus who basically didn't do squat for the Jewish people when Rome was basically having them in their noose. I don't want another failed Messiah that had a massive heart attack in 770 and didn't rise from the dead. Because obviously he's not the Mashiach. He was a great Sadiq, but he wasn't. Get over with it. Neither do I want another Shabbatai fee that brought the whole entire Jewish people into a com complete state of humiliation under Islam. My friends, we want the real one. We cry for the real one. And we want it now, but we want it from God, not from man. We don't want a, a Mashiach that denies God. We don't want a Mashiach, a, a representative of God that does just the opposite of what God says. Our halakha is very clear. We're dealing with a serious issue here. It's your life or it's your death. And we've been seeing how God has been raising Israel, the Jewish people, on heights like never seen before in human history, in exile. That even the nations of the world want to become Jewish. Since when? Since when has people in such massive amount want to become Jewish? My friends, I deal with this every day. People calling me, calling me, calling Rabbi Meza, calling a whole bunch of other rabbis, Rabbi, Rabbi Ovadia, so many other rabbis. They want to become Jewish. And they're told no. And they're honest, sincere God-fearers. Something is going to break. But to my message to you, Jewish non-believer, it's time for you, time for me, it's time for all of us to do Shuba. Return back to God. Return back to the very foundations that made us who we are, Jews. No, your intellect didn't make you a Jew. No, your bloodline didn't necessarily make you a Jew. God made you a Jew. God put you into the family that you have now the, the pride to be able to say, yeah, my mother was Jewish. And yet there are so many people who have Jewish names that are not even Jewish. I have met so many Cohens that, halakhically, they're not Jewish. I have met so many Rubensteins that are not Jewish. Silversteins that are not Jewish. Because from one generation to the other begin laxing and became assimilating to the practices of keeping as Jews, to marrying within the Jewish fold. And if they were going to marry outside, they would make sure that their 
woman that they were married go through the conversion so that we always be under the same faith, not be unequally yoked. And yet today we see all of this mess that has been created by the liberal-minded Jew who thinks they can outsmart God in his or her daily life and God says, no, it's time to come back. Time to return to who you are. You are not a liberal, leftist, communist wacko. You are part of my people. Come back. Get back to center. Get back to the foundations that I made you. I made you to be a holy people, not an ungodly people. And he reminds us constantly, through every phrase, through every uh, celebration, how he eliminated Jews that basically decided to attach themselves to the klipa of that time. Must he do the same thing? We have seen approximately about 25,000 Jews die from this pandemic. Does he need to do more? Does he need to do more? God is alive and well, and he's speaking to the Jewish people in this very period in time and calling us to do shuva, and we are closing our ear even though we heard the sound of the shofar. Do-do, do-do. What has he to do to wake you up from your sleep? How many more smacks must come your way to wake you up? Leave the idolatry, leave the adultery, leave the immorality that you're involved in. Wake up, shake off your, your dust of, 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 of dirt and dung that you have, have, in, have endowed your life with. Clean it up. Open your heart and open your mind. God, help you understand that we're living in a very unique to return back to our God. And God has been doing this in an incredible way. He's been opening up doors. Look at how he's preparing the way to go back to Israel. Yes, we don't belong here outside in the nations of the world. I'm fully aware of that. Our home is not the United States of America. We were here to be lights among the nations, but once that light basically turns off, there's no use anymore. And we become the dung for our enemies. My friends, wake up. Light that light inside of you. Scream with all of your heart, Hashem, Ms. Mora, please forgive us. Have mercy on all of us, on all of Israel. We have sinned. And we ask your mercy. Bring us back to those ancient times and ancient moments in life with you. You are our love of our life. You are our God. And there is nothing else but you. No, no money. Money is not our God. For many of you it is. It's become your whole entire life. Plashing and pleasure is not your God. For many of you that has become the very center of your existence. You can't disconnect from it. It's time for us to do shuva. It's time to get serious with God. If God has to take you to the point of taking you to the beyond, may it be only when you do shuva, complete Vidui and Shuvah. May God grant you that before you leave this world, that you leave clean and, and all straightened up before God. But we can avoid that. We can do that now without having be, been taken out or be taken out. My question, how much more will it take for you, my fellow secular, socialist, communist, Jew, that they've taught you to vote this way because this is what they taught me, tradition. But that tradition has been a tradition that has brought you down only to death, only to the Holocaust of the past, to the Tsarist of Russia, to the, 
to the very pit of death and death's hold. How long must we continue into the, the path of error and mistakes? O Israel, return unto me, and I shall return unto you. I will come back to you. I will bring you. I will raise you. I will do what I promised to do to you. To bring you up high. To raise you on high. And all of the nations will see the glory of Israel once again. But it's all conditioned on one but. If you return unto me. This is what Hashem says. This is what the God of Israel says to you. We're not talking about an idol. We're talking about the very God that has granted you as a people the right to be a people. Look at the nation of the Palestinians, and it's not even a nation, how they're wanting to striving to become a people which they're not a people. They're not. It's an invented group. And they're crying, oh, we're the Palestinian people. No, they're all Arabs. This is why they're so infuriated that Saudi Arabia have made peace this is a momentous time. Peace with Israel. This is, this is a dynamic that we knew that was going to take place in prophecy. In Navua. And now you, you secular Jews, you don't want nothing to do with God. You're, you're more interested in, in, in following the same shtus that was given to you. The shtusim of political correctness, the shtusim of, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Democrat. I always voted, for years, for years, I was always Democrat. I'll always be a Democrat. Uh, uh, even, if, even if they go to hell, I'll go to hell with them. Well, you might have to, because it is a war between good and evil. And if you side with evil, hmm, how many people died when they sided with evil, even if they were Jews? We have our history on that. We've seen that when we side on the wrong side, we have a lot of casualties. I pray to God, a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, that you do not end up as a casualty in this holy war that God has declared, and God is declaring for Jews to get out and return unto me. This is a call to Jews everywhere. Get straight with God. Increase your mitzvahs. Increase your Torah studying. Increase your dedication to God and God alone. Stop worrying about Mashiach as much. He'll come when God says it's time. Stop trying to find out who he is. That's in God's realm, not in your realm. And when he comes... God will prove to the whole world, not only to Jews, this is my anointed one. So let's stop and get right with God. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm calling you about. I see this happening, and just like I see, I saw Venezuela going down the tubes many, many years ago, and I did a whole video, a YouTube video on that, which YouTube, by the way, brought it down deleted it without even consent. They just did it arbitrarily. But thank God that my video that I did in, uh, for the Venezuelan Jews brought a lot of Venezuelan Jews out on time, was able to save many, many lives. And I'm seeing a lot of the similar uh, signs, as it were, or indications, similar that happened over there. Once the leaders of this nation begin to deny and blaspheme God by condemning Israel, by taking a stance against Israel, this nation will be doomed. And you Jews, the secular liberal Jews, who are part and parcel to making that happen, will lose all sechut to be redeemed, just like what happened in, in Venezuela. Venezuela is a microcosm of what could take place throughout all Jewry. The Jews in Venezuela lost their sechut, lost themselves as being the light in Venezuela, 
and became contaminated with the secular society that to be a Jew meant to be ostentatious, full of money, charging conversions at twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars just to be part of the membership of the Karaka, the Shul of Caracas. Don't you think this is happening here in the United States as well? I raised my voice back then. And still to this day, we are still seeing the, the curse that was brought upon Hugo Chavez. We even have one of the leaders that left Venezuela who has spoken to, who spoke to Chavez before he left, begging him not to curse Israel even in the letters that he signed with a, a bunch of other signatories, begging Chavez not to curse. And yet, apparently the, the sechut of the rabbis, the sechut of the community wasn't sufficient to stop it. And here we find this come to end. My friends, it's time to stop the nonsense and to return back to God. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero, hoping and praying on this, these 10 days of Teshuvah that we all sincerely, wholeheartedly, with all of our hearts, with all of our might, do Shuvah Hashem.